Approximately 34,000 people in Australia currently live with cerebral palsy, and this number is expected to increase to around 48,000 by 2050. Cerebral palsy is an umbrella term that refers to a group of disorders affecting a person's ability to move. It is due to damage to the developing brain either during pregnancy or shortly after birth. Every individual may have a variety of impairments ranging from mild to severe. However, it is important to remember that if someone has a physical impairment, to not assume they have an intellectual impairment. Research has shown that young adults with cerebral palsy have lower levels of participation and reduced quality of life compared to those without cerebral palsy. As health professionals, the way we interact with individuals with cerebral palsy has a major impact on their experience within the health system and their overall well-being. Therefore, it is important for health professionals to learn about and develop their disability confidence. Disability confidence is anticipating that those around you may have a disability and that you feel positive about your ability to respond fairly and respectfully to accommodate their requirements using empowering language and effective communication techniques. Similar to cultural awareness, disability confidence should be incorporated into daily practice within the workplace. Let's take a closer look at disability confidence as well as how this affects interactions. Many children with cerebral palsy are integrated within healthcare systems throughout the span of their lives. So it's important that they can positively engage with a variety of different health professionals to really achieve the goals that they set for themselves in the future. Because I've worked with people over the years who haven't been confident and they feel really bad for it. But it stops them from having some really amazing interactions with some people who have got a lot to say and a lot to share and a lot that we can learn from. And I think the more that we just sort of try and just talk to people that we don't know a lot about, the more we can learn from them and the better health professionals that we can be. I found last year that working or volunteering with individuals with cerebral palsy, I was often afraid to start an interaction because I wasn't sure about how they would communicate and I didn't want to offend anyone. I have a and I when I responded to pretended to understand to do that. It is disrespectful, it is not consistent with our ethos of respect and awareness and understanding. It's an A, the person will know and will be concerned at your attitude and what it reflects. Often you will be doing it with good intentions because you want the person to feel that you're understanding and wanting to communicate, and actually it's disrespectful. It we evaluate what they want and understand from their point of view. Put their opinions to themselves. Professional opinions, I get that, but personal. Be patient and listen and don't be scared to ask. Repeat what we've had. If 
we have some resources live large in this land which has a chance to ask the other person to get it A lot of people don't hurt the feelings but it's better and yes. The way you'd interact with a young person with CP would be like how you'd interact with any young person with any problem. I think that we interact with the person individually. I guess they can really think about the space that the person with cerebral palsy is coming from and try to get to know them and to get to know their preferred way of communication. Really just getting to know the person is the key. The better you know someone or taking the time to understand their background and where they've come from, the more meaningful communication that you can have. So again, it's important to really ask questions about how to use communication books, um, how to use equipment like donor boxes and so forth. Um, I think one of the challenges and one of the other things that, that's really important is to make time for that. And I think as clinicians, we're obviously often pressed for time, but just to make sure that we create space for meaningful communication. I think if we're less experienced at, at working with people with CP, then it's worth doing homework. So usually you'll know that you're having an encounter with somebody with cerebral palsy, in which case you often have access to a lot of information. So it's helpful to find out as much as you can about what challenges the person will have, and particularly if they're going to have a problem with communication. Within the hospital environment, you've also often got access to speech and language therapists. So if I'm working with a child with cerebral palsy and I'm unsure about the way they communicate, often I'll be liaising with the speech and language therapist. Disability and diversity is part of the human condition. It's just normal. Everyone is different, everyone has different strengths, everyone has different limitations. If you recognise that you're feeling uncomfortable, it's okay. But you don't want it to compromise the interaction. You don't want it to mean that you're less likely to ask a question or less likely to follow up an avenue because it requires you to persist with communication. I think what health professionals can do is just practice. So we need to take the knowledge that we have about the likely impediments that someone will have and we need to have a, a positive and inclusive and respectful attitude and actually engage. So rather than being reluctant, I think, to engage because we have a perception that communication might be difficult, we actually need to be quite persistent in our efforts to communicate. By raising awareness about disability confidence, we hope to start the conversation among not just health professionals, but the general public in order to improve equity in interactions for individuals with cerebral palsy.